can influence marketing efficiency. So, Carly, over to you. Thank you, Peter. As I mentioned, I'm Carly Schrager um, from Blueprint X. We are a global company that helps other companies ensure they get the full return on your technology investments. We specifically help with marketing automation, CRM, digital asset management, workflow management, reporting and analytics, e-commerce, as well as integrations in the strategic layer that sort of sits over top of all of that technology to ensure that your organization is adapting and getting the full return on that. Do you remember when marketing automation first came about? Because I do. It was 2008 and I was asked to go find an email sending platform. While I was doing my Google searches, I came across Eloqua. I hadn't even finished watching the demo online before my phone rang from Eloqua asking if I had any questions. It was amazing and I was hooked. I knew then that marketing automation was going to change the way we did marketing. Now that kind of experience is just expected from consumers at the very least. So marketing automation must be old and outdated, right? But it's not, it's actually a foundational piece of the next chapter. Marketing automation created the, the sort of extra team member of marketing by allowing for some ongoing communications that didn't require human intervention, taking targeting and personalization to a new level while enabling marketers to report on the success or not of their efforts. Leveraging your data, you can learn almost all you want about your audience, what they're interested in, the timing of their investment, who they collaborate with in their buying decision, how they navigate through the information you provide them, and what's gonna push them across the finish line to actually sign the deal or make the purchase. So it's really important to know your audience, who you're selling to, what their interests are, what their timing looks like, and who they collaborate with. You also need to know the path that they're taking. So what, it, what, what, sorry, what does it look like when they realize they have a problem, when they find the potential solutions, and how do they select that solution, and how do they choose to continue to do work with you? How do they navigate everything that you're providing to them? Some people know these two pieces as buyer personas and customer life cycle or customer journey. Armed with the quality of Sorry, quality data and analytics, marketers have had the capability to set up automated communication paths for different segments of their audience. With analytics, marketers have the power to iteratively optimize the communication paths, honing messages, timing, frequency, learning how to move prospects through the funnel faster, and even increasing purchase amounts. The combination of the amount of data available to marketers and the systems that facilitate automated journeys have taken the evolution of marketing quite a long way. But we're entering a new phase in marketing. My moment of receiving the phone call from Eloqua while still watching the demo, it's happening again. Marketing's capabilities and the ability to up-level in efficiency are evolving and it's pretty exciting. So let's take a look at your tech stack and let's talk about the art of the possible. So picture this, your tech stack includes a work management tool a marketing automation platform, journey management platforms, and a BI or reporting tool. At the beginning of the campaign creation process, you're thinking about segmenting your audience. So many people think segmentation is just coming from your marketing automation tool, but actually you can pull from multiple platforms, such as your CDP, a data warehouse to combine demographic, firmographic, behavioral data to enhance your segmentation capabilities. The more access to different sources of data you have, the more targeted and personalized your communication becomes. So now a communication, I'm sorry, campaign manager puts a request into your work management system, specifying the types of content that they want to include. The work management tool handles the request for content, creates the appropriate project and routing approvals of the resources. Content works its way through the approval process, and the integration is a critical element to this operation. We don't believe that your team members should be copying and pasting text into templates. Teams spend 20 to 30% of their time doing this. By implementing this level of automation, you gain back your valuable team members' time and allow them to focus on more strategic efforts. Your content is automatically pushed to journey platforms. Some examples shown here via the integration. 
The results are pushed to your analytics tools for review by the campaign requester or other stakeholders and should be used for optimization of future campaign strategy. Now imagine adding a digital asset management tool or AI into this mix and the solution goes to a whole nother level. The efficiency of marketing operations has been up leveled. Teams can accomplish more without growing the team. This might sound a bit different than your current process and don't worry, you're not alone, but do know this is where marketing is going. There's a lot of talk these days about AI and about generative AI specifically. It's been around for a while, but there's actually all different kinds of AI, not just generative. There's predictive, prescriptive, automation, and perceptive. Here you'll see some examples of each. You're probably using some of these now, but didn't really consider them to be AI. For example, do you have Salesforce Einstein configured? Because that's predictive AI. Do you use a tool like Octopost to automate your social media posts? That's automation AI. So your first step doesn't have to be generative. It can be automation or scheduling content to send at optimal timing. Think about the best use cases for your business, and that's a good place to start. So what do you do now? You recognize there's a new chapter coming, but how do you get yourself positioned to be most successful when you enter it? There's a few key areas that we wanna think about. Take a look at your tech stack, evaluate the state of your data, consider your integrations, and ensure you're benchmarking your performance. So let's start with the tech stack. Do you have the right tools? So many companies grew through all these years by accumulating one tool at a time making the best choice for each category and need when it came around. Fast forward to now, you may have what we call a Franken stack, and that stack could be perfect, or it might make sense to swap out a few tools and technologies. You might need to consolidate tools. You might want to evaluate your licensing, all of that in order to, best, to have your tech stack best serve you in your next chapter. So now's the time to evaluate and make any necessary updates. This process can lead to cost improvements, seamless data, and enhanced, sca enhanced scalability. Next up, data. AI in general is heavily dependent on data, whether for predictive capabilities, triggering action, or informed decision-making. Your data will be critical element to the success or failure of your efforts. The effectiveness of your AI success will directly be related to how accurate and how populated your data is. So identify your key fields, review the accuracy and completeness of that data. And again, now's the time to find ways to improve in these areas as needed. You saw the chart I shared to gain the new level of efficiency before. For this and other AI efforts, it will be critical to have your system integrations working as they should. Ensuring relevant data fields are included in the integration and populating properly and that you have the data you need for reporting and assessing where you're gonna find success. Benchmarking, you've gotta know where you're coming from. Benchmark your performance before you implement a single new tactic or strategy. This is so important as your starting point. Have you ever tried to lose weight? You have to step foot on that scale when you feel your worst, day one before you've made a single change so you know how much progress that you can make. You wanna establish your KPIs. Step back to align on the metrics that will, prove to, that will prove success or not of your efforts and make sure you're positioned to accurately and regularly track those. Set goals so everyone can agree on what success looks like. Track your metrics on an ongoing basis. This is how you're gonna know what's working and what isn't and allow you to focus your energy and time on the tactics that make the most impact to performance. If any of this sounds applicable or interesting for your business, I'd love to talk more about it and how you can get started down the path. Back to you, Peter. Lovely. Lovely. Thank you very much, Carly. There's a lot to unpack there. So um, let me just come, if you wouldn't mind, you could perhaps just share a little bit about the difference between the AI, generative AI, which I think is what a lot of people hear about, and the machine learning based AI, which is helping drive it in the background. So, because I don't think everybody fully appreciates there is a subtle difference, as you say. And in fact, there aren't just two, there are multiple versions of AI, but I think that's the biggest difference, isn't it? We've got the programmatic control that you can get through AI and rule identification and following. And then you've got generative AI, which is I think more focused towards content. 
Right. And so, yeah, generative, a lot of people think of like a chat GPT um, kind of, you know, produce the content, produce the talk points, um, which, you know, we always caution, be careful with that. Um, make sure that you're truly the author. Um, people are pretty keen to spot what's been what's been generated from a content perspective, at least in words um, by AI. Um, and then the, there's tons of power, as you mentioned, from kind of the machine part of it. Um, we sort of live in that space in terms of automation, which is really paying attention to the reporting and analytics and learning as much as we possibly can from the data and triggering automation so that we really are creating the, the true personalization, both from a timing, timing from a content um, and a targeting perspective. And our consumers can feel that difference. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. So I've got a couple of other questions for you. Um, this sounds great. And so I can see that there's real business benefits to be had in both the efficiency and the effectiveness of marketing automation here. But uh, what is the biggest hurdle to implementing some of the things you've discussed and how would you recommend we overcome those hurdles? Yeah, I always find that the biggest hurdle is actually getting started. I think it, it sounds like a lot. It feels like a lot. Companies also have to make the effort um, to set aside the time and resources and money to take on any of these efforts. Um, and to that, I always say, let's just start somewhere. You can start small. You just start taking one step at a time. So it doesn't have to be um, a complete overhaul of your company and their approach to automation. Um, but just start to carve off one piece at a time. Um, and of course, it doesn't hurt to have a partner who's kind of been there, done that to help you down the path and avoid the pitfalls. Yeah, I think that's what I called the people who were in wave one of generation, generative AI in that it had a huge amount of potential, but none of us really knew how to <laughs> exploit it. So we all experimented. And of course, that's where you hear the horror stories of where things didn't go well, but also the immense successes and I suspect that with a partner like yourselves, that's part of how you write a good requirements document is talk to the people that do it as a day job that have made the mistakes, have identified the wins. Now, um, one of the things I did want to ask you though, is when I was um, looking through your slides, it's very interesting, it's quite a stack there. And I was wondering, what about companies that don't own all of that technology or they don't have it all? as you talked about it in your example, is there not a solution for them? Or is it a case where you have to buy the whole thing before you actually start to see value? Good question. And a lot of people ask that question. You definitely don't need that whole stack in order to start moving forward. Um, there are automation and efficiencies to be found in each piece of the stack. So even just looking at integrating two tools together, like marketing automation and work management, for example. There's a lot of efficiency to be gained there to give time back to your teams. So I wouldn't be afraid because you don't have all of the technology. Like I said, just, just get started one step at a time and you can see some progress and sort of prove out the, the business case to move forward with additional technology. Lovely. And can I ask a, a question? I presume you also have experts on your own team that can help those organizations sound out. You know, the, the, the typical three act drama, isn't it? Where am I today? Benchmarking, as you say, where do I want to get to? But more importantly, how do I get from here to there? That's right. Yes, we do have have experts who um, help navigate that. And we call that kind of your roadmap. Um, so whatever it is that we help define as your ultimate goal, we can kind of help you establish what is future state and what's the best path and most realistic path um, aligned to your company uh, to get you there. Lovely. Thank you. So thank you very much, Carly. Another great presentation. I think we've had three here which have helped us identify who to approach and how. It really excellent content. And then how do we automate the process that we get the best out of that? So let's bring back Usman and Kabil.